Thanks to an update, I have no music to add to the beginning of this intro for this video on how to set up an Oneida Phoenix short with sights for my wife, so you have to listen to me talk. Hello everyone! Look what I got! She got her new bow in the mail, now the setup begins. <laughs> I just cut the box open. This is how they come if you've never got one. Here, here dump that out. They'll come with a book and all your modules. And, and she got herself a Phoenix short. Now I gotta go and set it up. Okay, before I even get going, I just want to tell you guys, if you're going to pull your bow out of the box and set it up, I just want to tell you some things to look for right off the bat that I learned that will, you know, keep you from getting pissed off if something might have got knocked around. First thing, if you're happy with the draw weight, look down your limbs. Look, I'm going to line that. You might not be able to see it on camera. But that top limb, it's cocked out a little bit. Now, before I go any further, I, I've talked to the, the people at Oneida, and they are swamped. Everybody wants these things, which is a good thing. Spin this around. That bottom one looks dead nuts. And uh, we're going to fix that. I'll just wiggle that timing cable. It's a little bit loose which you don't want them real tight, but we'll, we might just leave it like that. It should, they say it should wiggle about 3 16 You just grab that thing and wiggle it. Um, before you start shooting, you want to check your timing screw. Just snug it. And, I mean, you don't pull out any tools yet. Just kind of look things over, make sure everything's good. Then, uh, set, set that sucker down. Let's see. Let's check the tiller. Just see if they set it right. It's five inches to the center of the string. Pretty much dead, dead on. Next thing, I get out my Allen wrench. Get out your wrenches. Just check all the screws. Even though they do a good job, and it's from the factory, just your best bet is to just get in your get it in your head. I don't trust anybody. So I'm going to double check everything, check all your screws, just go through the whole thing. Alright, the first thing I'm going to get out of the way is I want the E-modules in here for her. So we're going to just open a little bag. Here's how they all come. You get a little tape measure with it. And you've got your book in there. <clears throat> and you go and find your E's. You just twist them off of there. Some of this stuff when I start doing it, I'm going to put it in fast forward, but when you twist them off of there, there's going to be a little piece of the plastic mold still on it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use my little file and you knock that down. So it'll slide into the slide into the cam easy. Okay. <clears throat> Here we'll tell. Three thirty seconds Allen wrench. You don't have to take that set screw all the way out. Just loosen it up, use the end of it, and pop your module out. <clears throat> and you've got your E's. Slide your E in so the fat part is down towards the power cable. Make sure it's sitting in there where it's supposed to be. Even if you've never seen this or done it, you can do it.
Okay, the modules are done. <clears throat> hey, just grab it and feel the... Man, that's just... Them E-modules. That's like butter. That's as smooth as you can get. This is just what I'm going to do. You guys don't have to do it. But I'm going to take these off to reduce the weight, even though it's not much. Those, to my ear, don't serve any noise reduction that I can hear, so I'm taking them off. Right now, my brother's out there stealing my log arch. He's gonna go pull a few logs. Burns freaking out. I take the stops. I just make them barely touch the string. Some guys like leaving a credit card thickness or whatever. That's do whatever you want, but I put them so they're touching the string. Not pressed hard, just right barely up against the string. And then while you're at it, check these, make sure they're tight. Your suppressor bar bolts up here. There's one on each side. Now remember that top limb? Okay, it's curved like this. That saddle screw. Loosen that baby up a little bit. I'm going to lay this here on my leg. Put your hand right by the hinge and just, just give it a little tweak. There, I went, I went too far. I don't know if you can see that, so I'll just, just take her back a little bit. And that is pretty much dead straight. Check it every direction so you're happy with it. Maybe we'll just, we'll just go back a little bit this way. Yeah, that's, that's right on the money right there. That's how you fix it. If your limb's out, that's all it is. It's not a hinge or none of that. Make sure you tighten that saddle screw back up. And then while I'm doing it, I want to make sure that bottom one's snug. And even hit your limb or your, your hinge Your hinge bolts. All them screws are tight. <clears throat> so I look down it and just draw it back again. Check it again. That thing's nice. Everything is perfectly in line. Here's something I like to do. We're going to keep this factory string on for her to shoot right now. So I'm going to check the knock fit for a gold tip. I can put that knock on there and spin that string and the whole, or spin the knock and the whole string will move with it. Like I can keep going, going. It hasn't even slipped yet. Yeah, that's, that was three times before. Anyway, that's way too tight. So, I'm going to cut this off, and I have some of this yellow, the uh, number 62 XS braided serving, and it is in .021, and that fits a gold tip knock exactly perfect. And it clips on there, pops right off. When I cut the serving off, just take your knife edge, go into the side here. You gotta do it carefully. If 
you've never served a string, I ain't going to zoom in and show you. There's plenty of videos, but do you a little serving jig. Yellow serving on. Listen at that click if you if it. Oh, that's nice. Clicks on there, good. Just how you want it. That string, that arrow will leave that bow. Perfect. Now we're going to do something a little bit old school. Instead of putting a loop on here like everybody in the Earth and Mars does these days. We're going to go old school. When I first met Melissa, my wife, she never shot a bow or nothing. So I set up an old browning for her, slide the eliminator buttons up. She would hook her release on the string. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring her back to her roots where she started from my old bow box. I got a, I got a stash of eliminator buttons. Here's what I use to, if I'm going to change the string or whatever. Let me just measure this shit. One inch outside diameter PVC pipe. You don't have to do this, but I was jacking around in the garage and I shot some foam into them. Pull your bow up. Slide them pipes in there. And now you got a limp string. You can pop your string off. Get you a little cotter pin. <laughs> Vern, what do you think you're doing? Slide a couple of these over your cotter pin. <laughs> like that. Some of you guys might not even know about this. This is the kind of back in the day stuff when you shot off the string. Get your pair of pliers and hold on to it. Pull them babies up over there. Get it on there. There's them puppies. Let's slide them up on the serving. Keep them all down low for now. <laughs> I'm going to tie on some cat whiskers. I don't want to put them on the bare strings. Every time I do, they slide around. So I'm going to serve about an inch and a half section here, top and bottom, and then we'll, uh, we'll be right back. All right, these, these silencers come in like this. I'm just going to split that in half. Whack it. Then, Split it in half again. And whack it. You know what? Then I'm going to split it, bend it in half again, and whack it. So I got one piece fell out. So I have this. I got my little bundle of four. There's videos to show you guys how to do this, so I ain't going to talk a whole bunch. But I'll just show you how to get them started. I get my string that I'm going to tie it on started. Grab my little bundle of silencers. Use a clothespin. Wrap that puppy around there. Over 
dab them with glue them not okay after that's all that's dried up a little bit just take them things and just just pluck them a little bit just just get the rubber strands broke up and it'll all fray out where it's supposed to be when you shoot it too but just just get it looking looking like a little puff ball and that is that for that I got her quiver this is an old true glow quiver she has another one of these so she can keep her field points in one and keep one loaded up full of hunting arrows for broadheads something I usually do I mean you probably don't have to because you can get it tight enough but I'll wax these threads a little bit prevent that thing from coming loose ever I'm not going to use a level level this square that even if I even on my when I was young when I was shooting target with sights and all that stuff my sight bows I, I had dude all you gotta do is eyeball it you ain't gotta put a level and a square on there freaking plum bob hanging what it I don't know I've never done it and I used to shoot perfect perfect rounds with perfectly tuned bows you should be able to put that thing on there and just look at it look at it with your eyes and heck this thing's dead center center shot too from it came off the medium when she was shooting it so we'll just snug that baby up got bolts to put the side on I'll put a little bit of wax in them threads too I've done this ever since I've been old enough to fondle tools and bolts what? all right dudes silencers are on three done serving with 021 Axe, zip the lips for a little bit, bud. We're setting Mama's bow up, and we got to show other other bow hunters how to do this. But not gomers. So I got all this stuff done. You guys just seen sights bolted on. Rest is on there. Now, uh, before I start, I put the knocking point on. You can use your square and check the brace height. This thing's at a, at six and an eight to this edge of the string. So I'm gonna set it up exactly like mine because I'm thinking this string's gonna stretch out a little bit when she starts shooting it. So I'm gonna twist it up a little bit, then we're gonna put the knocking on. So, you twist it up, then you check it again. And that's six and three sixteenths exactly, which what mine are. And you know, as you twist it up, there's going to be a little gap up here in between your string uh, stop and your string. We'll go back and we'll move them because I like them right against the string. Okay, I got an Easton bow square and I have a blue one in there. We're going to use the Easton just to get her right on. Usually, I'll just eyeball these. But I mean, if you got a bow, squ bow square and a biscuit, stick it right in there, just like an arrow. I gotta slide these eliminator buttons out of the way a little bit here. And you take that square and slide it down just to where that's touching. Touching the bottom of your bristles. And I'll lay it over. And I'm thinking, since she's shooting a release, and these bows, you keep everything even, your tiller, everything should be dead straight. Since she's coming off from the, off the string under the knock, 
I'm going to set it a sixteenth high. But I'm also I'm going to have her shoot a bare shaft too. So I'm going to set this where I think what's it should be damn near perfect. Tighten her down. And just because I like overkilling stuff, I'm going to throw another one on top of that one. Just in case it wanted it wants to slide, which it shouldn't. But you know, if she misses a deer or something happens, it's not going to be because of me. There's that. That's set up perfect. There's the eliminator buttons. I'm going to slide that up there. Where's it going? Some of you might not have ever seen these before, but that's how you're going to hook it up. Right there. Then she'll come in here with her little release, hook right under it. Well, that about does it for this right now. Well, here, look at that. There's her bow all ready to go. She hurt her shoulder, she was doing, I don't even know what she was doing, but it's a little bit sore and it hurts to draw the, the drawing muscles. So whenever she draws back, she said she gets about right there and it just hurts. So she ain't going to shoot it right away. You're going to let her shoulder heal up a little bit. And I put the E mods in. So, I mean, it just draws so super smooth. Never mind, I lied. We're not done. I'm not, I can't put this where it's supposed to go, but just hang on a second. Hang on. I won't put the little clips on yet. But I have her a big purple kisser button. She don't shoot a peep. So, that is the way Melissa shoots. And she's very accurate. When she I had her medium set up. That, that's mine now. It was mine, then it was hers, now it's mine again. Now she has a brand new unfondled short. So, I'm not going to put the clips on there. Some people measure the kisser button up from the knocking point. I don't. I always tell her. She puts an arrow on. She'll go, we'll just stand in the yard. She'll draw back. And she likes to put her thumb behind her neck. And her knuckle behind her jaw. So I'll just tell her, draw back where you're comfortable. Because every time you're going to draw to where you're comfortable. And I'll slide that kisser to where it nails the corner of her mouth every single time. We're not measuring squat. It's all about comfort and grace when you're shooting bows. You don't need a lot of weight. And by the way, um, yesterday my buddy Sid came over. And he has an Oneida long. And he brought a scale. So he wanted to shoot more weight. We damn, damn near cranked his all the way down. It was 74 pounds, and that sucker is smoking. And he shoots three under, no sights, and he'll stack them in there too. I got my bows <laughs> when I weighed my bow. It said 47 pounds. That's all I'm shooting, both of them. And I never scaled them before. I just started adjusting the weight to comfort. And one was 47, one was 48. So, I guess I ain't, I ain't gonna mess with them because they're cozy and plenty of power to blow arrows through bones. And, uh, yeah, I haven't had any problems. So, if that tells you guys anything about the, the power delivery of the, these bows, they, this is just a different energy. I can't really explain it. And I'm shooting out to 100 yards. I mean, I would say... 70 to 80 is probably my max because my knuckles getting up in the way and I'm having to look halfway through my hand when I get to 100. But if I cranked it down, I would, I mean, I could get it to where I could see to hit good. But there ain't, there ain't no sense in doing that. Anyway, I have a lot of tips and theories running around up here about bows because that's what I fondle a lot. I fondle a lot of bows.
Anyway, there it is. That's a Phoenix short. Yeah. Great bows. We'll see you whenever she starts shooting this bad boy.